Good morning, Southern California, AM 1220, KHTS. This show is Fred Arnold on the Santa Clarita Valley Chamber of Commerce Business Spotlight. I'm joined by my good friend J.D. Kennedy. J.D. Kennedy, is uh, he was representative of Congressman McKeon for three years. Almost four. Four years, almost four years. Uh, also, what's most important, he's a Marine. Uh, he served our country. I think he did two or three tours. Three tours. To the higher. sandbox, yeah. Yep. And, uh, and done a great job here in the Santa Clarita Valley and the Antelope Valley on representing uh, Congressman McKeon on all the veteran issues the veterans face today. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Now, I'm excited to announce, uh, and most people know this, you're running for uh, assembly. I am. I'm running for assembly against uh, Steve Fox. Steve Fox has um, been on several boards and uh, organizations, and he's uh, currently representing us in Sacramento. And we uh, would like to see you represent us uh, here in Sacramento. Why J.D. Kennedy? Well, right, right now, Steve Fox just, uh, he's... Not representing the Antelope Valley and the in the northern uh, Santa Clarita portion in the 36th district very very well at all. Um, I, I think he's set a record for abstentions um, and and his voting. Um, he hasn't taken a position on AB 109, and that's that's the bill that's um, realigning the prison system, dumping state prisoners into the county, and our county's just not equipped to to hold on to them and do anything. So they end up back on our streets. You know, the day I announced uh, my candidacy, he was actually holding a seminar for. Uh, victims of domestic violence at the Antelope Valley College, yet those those criminals uh, that are committing domestic violence crimes are being released onto our streets, and I, I don't understand how you can have it both ways and care for the victims, but not care that we're releasing the criminals onto the streets. Yeah, that that is a big concern, especially with with geez, the budget crisis we currently have. H how would you how would you govern differently? Well. I'd approach everything with a common sense approach. Um, right now, our priorities are just, it doesn't make sense what our priorities are. Uh, we haven't addressed the drought issues with a long-term uh, solution where we keep putting a Band-Aid over it. Uh, the plan that the governor's announced, uh, I think it was last week, it's just a, a short-term, very small fix to address the issue now with um, putting more money towards our food pantries, helping out uh, people that are hurting for lack of water coming to them, but it doesn't address the issue with a long-term solution. We need to address that. We need to create jobs. Um, we need to recruit businesses to come into our communities and open up shop. It's not just a legislative fix. It's not just a budget fix, but you actually have to come home, reach out to, to businesses and find a way um, to bring businesses from other states to expand into our community. And that's just something that our current representative is not doing. Well, and, and not only bring businesses here but what about trying to keep the ones that are currently here from leaving absolutely <laughs> that doesn't make sense right absolutely. it makes sense to keep the ones if they're creating jobs right now but they feel they can create more jobs somewhere else because of our regulatory environment regulation we're one of the most regulated states in the union and you'd know more about that than me yes uh, i would and, i know in the uh, mortgage business is crazy in the mortgage business it's it's insane i mean i'm going through that with you right now and it's just been red tape after red tape after red tape to get through uh, and it's amazing, just five years ago when I was uh, in escrow for my last property, the, the amount of paper, while it was large then, the amount of paper that we're going through now is probably five, five times as much. And it's just, it's crazy how hard we make it to do business in this state. Yeah, um, well, let me ask you something. You've been here three and a half, four years now. We've been serving veterans together. I, I know, I, I almost think you're the leader of it um, for, for our area and, and at least the 25th district you've been for Congressman McKeon. What are some of the biggest lessons you've learned serving our community? Uh, number one lesson is things can, things can be done. There, there's a lot of people that are gonna come at you with uh, an approach that know that this is how it is and uh, this is a regulation that's gonna keep us from being able to get something done, whether it be city, county, state, federal. Um, but there's always a way to make stuff happen. There's, a, there's s some way to sit down with somebody, look at the regulations, say, okay, well, let's, let's follow that, but how can we get this done? The, the better question is, can, not, can we get it done, but how can we get it done? Um, except a no for an answer to do good for the community just isn't acceptable. You were the commander at the local legion. Yes. Um, American Legion. Um, and you served, and you were one of the youngest commanders, I, I believe, because uh, the, a lot of the Legion uh, legion followers and, and uh, loyalists and, and members were a little bit older. Um, tell us about that experience and what you learned from being that leader for, or commander of the Legion. Well, 
it, it was a little odd at first. Um, I, I think I was the second youngest uh, commander ever in the nation. There was somebody up in Oregon who was 27 years old when he took commandership at his post. But um, being a leader of, of a veteran organization, age isn't too much of a factor is what I found out. Everybody's there for the common, common cause of serving the community and serving veterans. Um, we're always looking for different ways to partner with the college or with small business like yourself to, to have scholarships to serve our veterans or to uh, give to the food pantry or we've created a partnership with Help the Children and we, um, we work to serve not just veterans but the community uh, all together and uh, the age just hasn't been a factor. Um, everybody comes together. We've got a great board. We've got a great membership uh, at the Legion as does many of the other veteran organizations throughout town. Um, so uh, it was almost a uh an advantage being young, didn't it? Because you can think of things differently than people thought in the past. Yeah, I, th I think it, it, it's been an advantage for, for uh, my age has been an advantage for me. Um, every, every, every organization, whether it be the, uh, a political organization, a veteran organization, or uh, any charity, their biggest struggle is always attracting youth and having somebody a little bit younger on board, whether it be in a leadership role um, as commander or just a board member or an active member, um, that's that's step one of attracting youth is having youth being active at your organization. I want to ask you one last question, and, and I'm throwing these questions at you, and I don't have a list of questions here. I just <laughs> wanted to talk to you and be real on where you're going with uh, as a candidate for assembly. Let's talk about nonprofits. I know you sit on several nonprofit boards here in the Santa Clarita Valley, and I'm assuming out in Antelope Valley. You know, it's people helping people. And I, isn't that so important when, when you can come from that aspect of people helping people? And now you're going to be going to Sacramento. Hopefully you'll be going to Sacramento to represent us. Let's talk about people helping people. Um, well, the Antelope Valley is very similar to Santa Clarita Valley. The, uh, the, the heart of the community lies within the, the charity organizations, and it's just a, a maze in the long list. I think we've got somewhere around 300 in Santa Clarita Valley. Um, it's probably more than that in the Antelope Valley just because it's a, a larger community. You've got two cities there versus the one here. Uh, and the small businesses give back, and they, they create organizations to give back. Uh, there, there's a um, kids' charities uh, organization that's just designed to give back to to youth and uh, help help youth in the Antelope Valley. And they had a their annual fundraiser just last week. It was called the Chill Out, uh, and that's put together by uh, the owner of Harley Davidson. That's just a, one example of a small business giving back. Um, I think we need to have our we need to have legislators who our servants and service in Sacramento, but also come home and are a part of the community and give back and really put their money where their mouth is. And they say, okay, youth is, youth is one of my priorities. I'm going to give back. I'm on the Boys and Girls Club board. We, um, I think the, the different committees I was with last year, we got somewhere around $100,000 just within a couple of committees. And um, it was through fundraisers and grants and just asking people to, to give money to the Boys and Girls Club and um, provide those after school programs that the state's budget with, the, with their lack of funding coming into our schools the schools locally are saying well we've got to weigh our options obviously they're going to stick with the academics they have to do the academics but there's a lack of after school programs and how do kids get in trouble ha, ha, yeah. kids, kids get in trouble by not having something to do yeah and i think that's really important uh, you know jd as we close this thing up uh, you've been a long time friend of mine now for about three and a half years actually almost four years it was um Oh, I almost want to say May 10th, and I'm sorry I don't know, know the uh, exact date. It's a four-year anniversary of the passing of Ian Gielig, mm -hmm. um, and that's where we first met when you when you went with Congressman McKeon. And ever since then, you've been a champion of veteran issues. You've been a champion of youth issues. You've been a champion of our community, and I know you've been a champion of the Antelope Valley. So I really appreciate you. This is my, if you will, personal endorsement uh, as a human being, as a person, as a veteran. Uh, that you've you've given so back for, so much back uh, for our community and I, I wanted to thank you publicly and tell you you got my full support well I appreciate it Fred thank you ladies and gentlemen uh, JD Kennedy those who want to reach out and find out more about your campaign Kennedy for assembly dot com or facebook dot com slash Kennedy for assembly now let me just tell you right now JD's a big Facebooker so <laughs> go on Facebook you can find out everything he's doing you can find out how to get involved I know he's having a fundraiser at American Family Funding here in about a week and a half March 6th March 6th and so come join uh, find out more about his issues that he wants to tackle here in the Antelope Valley and the Santa Cruz Valley
Ladies and gentlemen, J.D. Kennedy is uh, trying to represent and will represent us in the 36th District of uh, the Assembly 36th District for the State of California. You've been listening to AM 1220 KHTS.